Today we're presenting on real-time streaming applications on GCP. Um, so um, I'm going to present with my colleague Akhilesh Singh. So we're both from Sydney from the JPAC professional services team. Uh, and Akhilesh is the lead strategic cloud engineer. Um, and I am the, I'm a cloud consultant in data and analytics. So we work on this stuff every day. Um, so hopefully we're, we'll share a little bit of what we've learned with you. So there's three things we're going to cover. The first is why Google Cloud. Um, then I'll talk about what we have to offer on Google Cloud and the different suites of product, like the different products that are available to do streaming real-time applications. Um, and then I'll go through how you would do it. And then after that, we've got a demo. And there's a chance to win. We have some three prizes. So we're going to get some interactivity going. And um, at that point, I'm going to ask you to pull out your phones. So if everyone wants to get your internet connection ready, that would be good. So let's start with why. So big data is in our DNA at Google. We have over eight products with over so we have eight products with over one billion users. So a lot of the products that we're making available through to you to do these um, types of problems to solve these problems are things that we use internally and that we've made available um, to the community. So this has started in 2002, where we've been innovating on lots of different products. So you might have heard of um, Bigtable or uh, Spanner. Um, and a lot of these uh, innovations were um, made available to the open source community. Um, and so what we're now doing is then bringing those back to Google Cloud Platform and, open, and making them available as services, as managed services to you. Um, so things like BigQuery and PubSub and uh, Bigtable are all um, services that we provide. So our focus for the customer is to focus on insights. So rather than you having to worry about the infrastructure, um, letting you focus on, on what you want to do with the data and get the insights out, out is our um, key focus. Another is looking at streaming analytics. So being able to get real-time business insights and um, make your business more responsive. So if you can get insights in in real time, then you can also react in real time. Um, and then we make that easier to do using uh, machine learning. So what you can do is, once you've got your data coming in real time, apply a machine learning algorithm on top of it and actually um, make it actionable uh, automatically without you having to manually intervene. So I'll talk about what next. So what's available on Google Cloud Platform to do streaming analytics um, and streaming app, apps. So we, we focus on four stages of a data platform. So the first is the um, ability to ingest at any scale. So what we're going to show you today is actually not that we can do streaming, but that we can do it at scale. So we're going to have um, the ability to, to ingest thousands and millions of messages. Um, the second is to process and transform the data reliably. The third is to store seamlessly. And the fourth is to analyze, learn, and validate. Oh, sorry, and visualize with speed. So we're going to go through each one of these, and I'm going to talk through all the Google Cloud um, Platform products that enable each of these. So that brings me to the how. So this is a typical data pipeline that I'm going to walk through. Uh, and we have lots of different ways of doing things. So this is just uh, sort of one way of piecing things together, but it's quite a common architecture. So we start with uh, streaming events coming in uh, like from IoT devices, or in this case, we're actually going to have mobile device data that's coming in. And that will be uh, read to a cloud, sorry, written to a cloud pub subtopic. And we, get, we can read from that cloud pub subtopic as well. Um, so cloud pub sub is a serverless, fully managed, asynchronous messaging platform. Um, so you, basically, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's, you just publish your topic and read from it. The second is um, we can also ingest batch data. So you can actually do both of those at the same time. So Dataflow, um, which is going to be the next step, is going to, is going to be able to handle both those types of streams um, of, of data sources. Sorry, um, And that is going to be read into cloud storage, which is our, our um, performant, unified, and cost-effective object storage bucket for binary and blob data. So then it's going to go into Cloud Dataflow. So Dataflow has connectors to PubSub and to Cloud Storage. And it's going to be able to process our data and um, apply transformations as we need them to to batch of stream. So one, one interesting thing about um, Dataflow is that we can handle real-time streaming data. So we can apply things 
Something you do differently to batch data is you apply things like windowing functions, where you take an aggregate of um, the data that's being read in, and you can and you pass that downstream. But we can also use other products like Dataproc. Um, so if you have already got um, Spark and Hadoop jobs, you can migrate them over to Dataproc. Um, and we can then, from Dataflow, write it out to BigQuery or Bigtable. So you can go to lots of different sources. This is just an example. Um, so BigQuery is our data warehousing solution, um, and Bigtable is our high-performance NoSQL um, database for large workloads. Cool. And then we can apply uh, machine learning on top of that. So once the data is in a database, we can pull it out, or we can actually use it directly from um, Dataflow. And then we have a lot of visualization options and different analytical tools. So we can use Cloud Data Lab, which is a Jupyter Notebooks type of environment. You can use um, either third-party tools or something like Data Studio, which is a BI tool that we have. Um, you can share with other people, or you can um, produce applications reports. So we've done the last one today as well, so we can show you that. OK, so we're about ready to start the competition. So can I ask everyone, if, you're, if you want to participate, get your phones out right now um, and get a web browser open. And we're going to give you a URL in a minute. So if you can get that ready. These are the prizes, just to give you a little bit of an incentive. So we have a pair of Google Cloud socks, a beanie, and a t-shirt. So what we're going to do is um, you're going to vote, uh, and the highest score will win one of these prizes. Over to you, Akash. So this is the URL we need to go to. And you will see a very simple voting application with only three logos. Uh, you can't go wrong there. Just enter your username and start voting. So if everything goes well, uh, you'll see your name appearing, appearing here. Oh, Akalash. Akalash. Probably just leave the URL a little bit longer. So, yeah. OK, so we're going to start a timer, and we'll bring the URL back up. And you'll have one minute. So go back to the URL page, Akalash. Uh, sorry, can you bring up the URL? That... Yep. So it is uh, bit.ly slash 2 w r I V B P and the I V P B is lowercase. Cool. So um, try and vote as many times as you can on each of the products. You might want to pick one that you really like, like the socks or the hat, the beanie. Um, and then in about a minute, um, we'll wind down. Can you get the timer up, Akalash? Cool. So Akalash, while it's going, do you mind explaining what's happening in the back end? Yeah, so in real time, when, we, uh, when you're pressing a button, the request is going to an App Engine instance. And App Engine scales automatically. You don't have to scale it. So we were actually not running any instances, but because of the voting application, we'll see that there will be many application, uh, instances which will be created on the fly. On the other side of things, there's this data flow which Liz talked about. And in data flow, what happens is like when the messages are in the Kafka queue, uh, on the PubSub queue, uh, it reads from there, and as you can see, it's processing a huge number of messages without any scaling. Post that, the results are actually presented here. So you can see like the ninja is winning as of now for SOX and with a total of 15 votes. And this is updating in real time as you click on the buttons, right? Cool. How Should much time left? To that? Yeah. Are we nearly done? Yeah. Um, we are 14 seconds away. Oh, okay, 10, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Akash, take a screenshot. <laughs> yeah. So whoever is listed at the top now, um, after the session, please come over to the experiment pod one, and we'll give you your prize. Yeah, so we'll take a second to just let it refresh, and we declare the winners. Cool. So this is not the end of it. Like uh, When you build a really cool app, it may actually become very popular across the globe. And not only 100, but let's say like there are millions of users. So I'm using a tool, which is JMeter. It's a bare bone JMeter, uh, which can create uh, millions of requests on our server. And we start seeing that uh, we are encountering 0% error, and the number of requests is this. 
So there's already 3,000 requests which has been passed in a short duration of time. And uh, let's see if it reflects on the dashboard. So as you see, like this is completely serverless solution. Uh, it relies on components which Liz talked about. This app engine and this data flow. They scale all well without us, uh, without any developer intervention. Liz, up to the slides. Cool. So I'm just going to talk through what we just did, just to recap. So can you skip? Uh, sorry, I'll do it. So what we did was we read real-time events in from your mobile devices using an App Engine um, front end. So that's actually scaling up to meet the demand. So however many people are here, whoever's logging on at this time, we're scaling up. And then when Akalesh um, just showed you that last screen, what he was doing was injecting a lot of extra events from a, a robot. And then that's being read in through Cloud PubSub. So it's being published to a topic, and we're reading that back through um, from D Cloud Dataflow. So Cloud Dataflow is taking those messages and processing them in parallel in real time um, with latency of just a couple of seconds and publish them to BigQuery. And from BigQuery, we're presenting that dashboard on the screen, which is showing you the leaderboard. Um, so we've managed to piece it together end to end. Um, and then we can also do a few more things, um, which we, we didn't do in this presentation, but it's just to demonstrate as well that you can actually get batch data in at the same time. And you can actually process both batch and streaming data together um, with Cloud Dataflow, or separately if you wish. Um, and then output it to lots of different option, uh, destinations. So um, just to recap, there's a couple of uh, big customers that are using solutions like this. So we have. Um, Twitter, who's using it to help them scale. Uh, so they've got a hybrid Hadoop and data product cluster. Um, and they're working towards a serv fully serverless environment on Google Cloud. We have AirAsia um, with 500 million passengers. They're using BigQuery, PubSub, Data Studio. Um, and they've been able to reduce their costs using those tools. And we have Spotify, who are um, cloud native um, and have you know, implemented these solutions to help them. So the key takeaway today is that the focus is on real-time insights. Um, so we have these massive amounts of data coming in, um, and we want to be able to make use of them in real-time, make decisions in real-time, and add value to your business in real-time. So thank you very much. <laughs>